Welcome back to Point of View. On International Women's Day, we are exploring the status of women in our society. It's an issue for women all over the world and it's no different here in PNG. In fact, many would say that we have quite a long way to catch up. In our modern history, over the past four and a half decades, we've only managed to elect 10 women to parliament, beginning with Dame Josephine Abijah, who was elected as a member of the Papua New Guinea House of Assembly in 1972. Well, not much has improved, although at the last elections, a record three women were elected to our national parliament. Our traditional cultures have been a big factor in this. So how has the status of uh, women in PNG changed and evolved from traditional times to today? Yeah. Well, thanks, Tanya. That's a good question. Traditionally, I think the roles of women was pretty much to be the primary caregivers, stay at home, look after the kids, um, you know, make sure that everything in the house is actually in order. But today you find more and more women actually working um, joining the workforce, with more and more women actually becoming um, leaders in their workplace. And also you find women doing more non-traditional roles, such as women becoming engineers, pilots. So it's, it's come a long way in PNG alone. So it's pretty amazing. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Look, the role of women, um, the status of women has changed quite a bit. Uh, Nana is absolutely right. Um, we've gone from caregivers and we're more uh, in the public, we're more in the workforce, uh, we're more visible. And it's important, I think, uh, in my line of work with models and um, uh, fashion designers, I see more women more confident in themselves. They're excited about their beauty and then they're excited about what they can offer Papua New Guinea and the world. So definitely we've changed quite a bit. Mm. Yeah. Well, Cleo, you're a little bit younger than some of us sitting at the table. Um, so, you know, your experiences may, your memories may not go back as, as, as late as mine do. But what have you observed, you know, from the time, you know, from the looking at the role of your parents, your mother, say, to you, yourself and your peers? Well, I think that, um, you know, the status of women is in, you know, changing from this traditional society to now that we are. I think education has come a long way into grooming women mm. and building them up. Yeah, it's interesting that you talk about education. Um, I remember looking at photographs of, you go and look at the old photographs from Sogeri High School and mm. Ayura National yeah. High School from like the 70s, mm -hmm. and you will maybe see one woman. If you look at those old photos, yeah. that's, you know, and, and I mean, it's that's true, amazing. Huh? It's amazing. It's crazy. I just remember thinking, <laughs> sexist much, you know, like, what about the girls much, you know? Yeah, right. All oh, my, my father, you know, in school, I, all I see are men and his mates and his yeah. mates and their mates. Yeah. I don't really hear much about, yeah. oh, who is that girl or who are the school, you know, mates who are girls. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the, I think the attitudes have changed a lot from parents now um, wanting to educate their daughters Absolutely. just as much as they mm. want to educate their sons. Yeah. And that's like, you know, to me, that's like, I used to feel so privileged that I was in yeah. my family that were edu yeah. giving me an education when my peers, who were boys and they had sisters who were just not... Yeah. Just, yeah. I think that's, they've, they've, yeah. um, we've come to actually see, uh, keep going back again to this, our self-worth, you know, yes, what yes. we can bring to the table um, as, as you know, the breadwinners or as the support um, to support the, our people and our men and our country for that matter. So it's, it's, it's amazing to see that, yeah. Yeah, as, as we, when you, we were talking about that, like with, in terms of women being traditionally caregivers, but also, you know, there's one of the, like, what, what about empowerment? What sort of empowerment did they have through that? Um, I, I'm just thinking about empowerment in terms of the things that give a man power is his land yeah. mm. and his, you know, yes. wives and, and pigs, you know, pigs and, and, yes. and, you know, that's not necessarily in my Finchhofen culture, but that's in, you know, a lot of other mm. cultures. Definitely. It wasn't, you have to remember, it wasn't too long ago that conversations like, oh, so you yes. school. That Absolutely. was just had in just the yeah. last you know couple, couple of years, of decades, yeah. mm. you know, just like yesterday. Mm. So these types of attitudes we have to think about have really changed. Like my father is very adamant on education, and he puts us in the same ranking with my brothers. Um, mm -hmm. But in terms of our roles, you're right; they have changed. Uh, we're, we're slowly, but we're getting there, I reckon. Yeah. And do you think the arrival of you know like patriarchal structures like you know 
without uh, meaning to offend anybody's uh, spiritual or religious beliefs, like the Christian church coming in, which, which is a very male, you know, patriarchal structure from a very patriarchal culture. I know I'm asking this because Fincher, where I come from, we are a matrilineal culture mm -hmm. traditionally, yes. but I never knew that growing up because I grew up in a patriarchal structure. And so, you know, sometimes I wonder whether we've gone backwards, you know, like traditionally I might have been better off. <laughs> that, you know, the ground comes through the mother. <laughs> That's true. I read somewhere, I read somewhere that when the, the Christianity was brought to the Highlands, there's, a, there's this little study I read that um, they said that men couldn't have uh, practiced polygamy. So the guy who was practicing polygamy, rather than divorce his wives or leave them, he just killed the other, other wives and kept one. Which that's, you know, I couldn't understand that, but it's the, yeah, that's what happened. Some kind of thinking, yeah. 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 So I think, yeah, I mean, education has played a really key role in changing those mindsets and making people realize that, um, you know, being educated, getting an education, um, uh, rising in that in that professional arena gives you that us women that space to actually overcome some of these challenges. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I agree with what Philly was saying earlier on about you know not being able to fly with one wing. Um, you cannot even fly if you have a stone on your back. So some of our traditional you know cultures had suppressed women. But um, into this modern age now, we see women, you know, being able to rise up and do their own decisions, of which I see decision making is one of the key factors that is, you know, being empowered um, to women these days. I have an aunt back in the village who is a um, village magistrate and she does decision making. So I think, you know, we're proud of that. Yeah. Mm. Well, we'll take a short break right now. And when we return, we'll be exploring the value women bring to business and the work of the Business Coalition for Women. Don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> 